This video is about two awesome brand new Marvel Game Leaks that really confirm and set the stage for some incredible hype and some incredible futures for both the Iron Man and Black Panther video game franchises. Plus, it's just a great opportunity for me to use some Anthem gameplay, and I'm not going to pass that up. So what's going on, guys and girls? It's Ghost Robo. It's so good to be back in these shoes. They're, they're a, little, a little squishy. I don't know. It's been a while, but I am super hyped for the ever-expanding Marvel game universe, and we're going to be talking about two exciting leaks that I think give a really good confirmation of how these games are going to play, what they're going to be like, and what you can expect, and sort of honestly the direction that Marvel games are going in general. So let me know in the comments down below if you're more excited about the Iron Man leak or about the Black Panther leak, which game sounds cooler to you. And right off the bat, we're not talking about Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra, which is the Skydance Media game, uh, the Black Panther Captain America World War II game. We recently got a nice story trailer for that game. It's the one that's being worked on, uh, or at least written by Amy Hennig. It's got a good pedigree, and it's going to be a very story-driven single-player game. We're not talking about that. We're instead talking about the Iron Man and Black Panther games from EA. Now I'm gonna give you a little overview about those in case you're unfamiliar or in case you forget, and then we'll dive into the leaks. So both of these games have been announced sans footage. There's no trailer, there's no gameplay, but we're gonna kick it off with Black Panther. Okay, so the Black Panther game was announced and confirmed earlier this year, back in February. It is a Wakanda Black Panther story-driven game. It's being worked on by a brand new studio at EA called Cliffhanger Games, uh, and they are going to be bringing their pedigree from the Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War games to Black Panther's universe. Now, what's awesome about this is, yes, they say it's a third-person, story-driven action game, but Shadow of Mordor. If you're not familiar, those are the Lord of the Rings games that introduce the Nemesis system. And the Nemesis system is a sick system that made your enemies hate you. Like actually hate you because it was over time they grew to not like you and you built these relationships or these enemy ships with your antagonists and they would evolve and grow as you played. And so some like low ranking officer uh, that you met early on could evolve into a big bad boss that had a scar from you and had like a vendetta against you because of what you did to him and his clan earlier in the game. It's a super cool idea and one that I think like it hasn't been explored a lot. Like it hasn't really been utilized in too many games and it does seem like this Black Panther game could very well take advantage of that nemesis system because we now know that this is going to be an open world game. An open world Wakanda game, which sounds super sweet, and I think the Nemesis system fits in perfectly given all the different leaders and clans that make up Wakanda. So where did this come from? Um, we do have a job listing uh, that really gives us insight into this here. It's a principal sandbox designer post uh, over on EA's Great people.com website where they look to hire new talent. Uh, they are looking for Cliffhanger Games, a newly formed Seattle studio focused on blockbuster action adventure games, pioneering next generation, emergent storytelling beginning with Marvel's Black Panther, and they're looking for someone to be the senior technical designer will be instrumental in designing and populating encounters, systems, and gameplay within a dynamic and evolving open world. Boom open world and this has sort of been i feel the way that things are going but what's great here is it's a single player narrative driven open world and that to me is very different than the open world that we've known and that you like first think of in your head so the open world that we first think of to me is like the ubisoft open world giant map all sorts of iconography all over the map you got towers you got outposts you go around you do a bunch of stuff and it's really cool sandbox but it doesn't necessarily feel like it was like there's that many curated spaces, that many design spaces. Well, enter Spider-Man, the Insomniac games, and enter the Jedi uh, Survivor and Jedi Fallen Order games, which are published by EA, and we see the direction that Disney is looking to take their Marvel and Star Wars IP-driven games. They have open spaces, they have open worlds, but they also are very immersive, very story-driven, very character-focused, and they're trying to bring together a way to play in a big space with lots of options, lots of choices, lots of side missions, interesting secrets to find, things to explore, 
but still delivering a very story-driven game where you can latch on and become emotional with these characters. And like that's why that's why Spider-Man 1 and 2 are so successful. They deliver a great Spider-Man tale in a great New York. And even though there's lots to do in New York, I feel like those are a leg up on the traditional open worlds. And same with Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor, like those have huge spaces. They got big things to ride around, big spaces, collectibles, places to explore, sort of like extra secret areas that you can go to level up, but they also deliver those tried and true linear single player missions that feel very designed, that feel very purposeful, and that give you big set pieces. So to me, this is like the best of both worlds, a Wakanda that is huge and explorable, but still very story driven. Like that is the ideal Black Panther game. And it's going to be a bigger game than the Skydance game, the 1943 game, because that seems to be truly a single player narrative adventure. And they're both, you know, third person action adventure games, but this one being open world is going to deliver a bit of a different flair. And I think it's the perfect fit for Wakanda and exploring the different areas of Wakanda, the different factions within Wakanda, I think is just gonna be super juicy. Obviously we'll be Black Panther, we'll be leveling up, we'll be exploring, but I think they're really gonna go for the Insomniac Spider-Man feel for this game. And it should look incredible. It's years off obviously, but as much as EA messes up sometimes in the business and the PR departments, they do a great job, I think, with some of their games. Like lately, they've put out some really nice titles. The, the Star Wars games that I've mentioned are a good example. And I, I kind of have faith that they can deliver this. Remember the Marvel Avengers game that was kind of a stinker? I mean, it's better than people give it credit for, but it's not, it's not like a game of the year contender. That was Square Enix, all right? And then we have Insomniac and PlayStation working on Spider-Man. So this is EA really like jumping in full scale to the single player Marvel universe after success with the single player Star Wars universe. And, and I trust them because of what they did with Star Wars. And that is gonna go for Iron Man as well, even though Iron Man is coming on the coattails of a massive failure. So Iron Man, I mean, guys, it, it is going to use the Anthem tech. If you're not familiar with Anthem, this is BioWare's big blunder, but, but the flying in that game is the best in the world. I have never played a cooler, controlling, better flight-based character game than Anthem, and I think that element, that those mechanics, that, that design, that tech is great and needs to be used again. And that's why when they announced their Iron Man game, from EA Motive, it's pretty exciting. Again, they say that Marvel Entertainment and EA Motive are working to bring their original vision of one of Marvel's most important, powerful, and beloved characters, their experience delivering both established entertainment worlds and thrilling gameplay, combined with their authentic passion for the armored icon, will fuel our quest to deliver a love letter to a legendary hero in the form of the Ultimate Iron Man video game. Now, EA Motive is pretty strong. They made the recent Dead Space remake, excellent remake, fantastic hybrid open world, right? They connected the Ishimura in ways that the previous, like the original game did not. They also worked on Star Wars Squadrons, so we know that they have some Star Wars love at that team. Um, and they really are going to be building, again, a third person, single player, story-driven title in the Iron Man universe. Now, again, we get a job posting looking for a senior technical artist for Iron Man. Motive Studios is looking for a senior tech artist to help oversee the rendering related aspects of an open world action adventure triple A title. Boom. Again, an open world game, but we're still going very story driven. Look at EA's post. They want to make sure that this is going to be a really good story and something that is very engaging and fresh for Iron Man. Olivier Proulx, who is the executive producer of the game, says we have a great opportunity to create a new and unique story that we can call our own. Marvel is encouraging us to create something fresh. And I think that's pretty darn nifty uh, that they are given a little bit of leash here to make something great because that's what happened with Spider-Man. That's what happened with the Jedi games. And that's why those are a cut above. But an open world Iron Man game with the Anthem tech is going to be sick. Iron Man is going to control amazingly well. And for whatever you think or don't think or don't know or know about Anthem, it controlled very well. The side missions, the overall world, the repetitiveness, the replayability, that all 
had much to be desired. But the actual like boosting, controlling, firing from above, it's perfect for Iron Man. It's absolutely perfect. And they wouldn't doubt that they are trading notes so that the motive team can get the goods on how Anthem went well. And they can at least put that tech to some good use in an Iron Man game that will be truly incredible. Now we've seen some speculation on what this open world could be because, you know, it's not as nailed down as Wakanda for Black Panther, and it seems like San Francisco is what people are thinking this will be. Uh, that's a big city for the West Coast Avengers, it's a really cool location, and I think if you look at like how Spider-Man did New York, Iron Man could do San Francisco. Although it's gonna have to be a bit different because Iron Man can move a lot farther and a lot quicker, so I hope that they have multiple like distinguished areas where you're not just in a city, but you're also kind of going maybe to more bespoke areas that are for specific missions. And I think San Francisco, given sort of its spread out nature between like the city and then across the Golden Gate Bridge, you got water there, you've got, uh, you know, sort of the, the upper cities above San Francisco. I think that's a pretty good spot where you could have a lot to work with. And we know open world games have become so seamless. And given that these titles are still years out, this could truly be an insanely awesome open world. Now, I have more hope or more hype, I guess, for the Black Panther game delivering kind of the open world that I like. I think the Iron Man game should be able to do it, but given Iron Man, like, like I said, he's gonna have to travel more ground. And so I do wonder if that is going to take the shape more of like the Ubisoft style, yet EA Motive's experience is in designing really good single player games. So I do believe that their experience on Dead Space will help them to make a game that is very character narrative driven while still being open exciting and allowing you to sort of have your own influence i think that's the the part about open worlds that we love is being able to sort of go at our own pace on our own path and feel like it's not just riding a disney ride down a very like track right like we want some of that during the big moments the boss battles the important story plot points but it's also important to have that open world open sense and i i think ea honestly has a chance to do both here. If I had to pick what I'm more excited for, it's hard, but I would pick Black Panther because I think the Nemesis system combined with the Wakanda universe is going to be absolutely incredible. And I love that Cliffhanger Games is a lot of people from the Shadow of Mordor team and they're bringing that experience to the Black Panther universe. I think Black Panther is like a perfect skin for Shadows of Mordor, although given how many years have passed, how far tech has come, what players sort of demand, want, and need, and I assume how much money they're getting to make this AAA Black Panther game in concert with Marvel, I think Black Panther is going to be freaking incredible. Now, both these games, like I said, are years out, but as soon as we get more footage, as soon as we get any sort of information, screenshots, I will be bringing them your way, I will be covering them, but I think it's interesting that we are seeing sort of the Star Wars Marvel universes really go into kind of its own genre, like this new open world single player narrative type genre that tweaks the open world formula a bit from just icon hunt on a huge map to more explorative, to more narrative driven, to having more set pieces and indoor areas, outdoor areas, you know, more linear segments, more spoken wheel type segments where you can pick what you want to do, where you can go after some collectibles, go after some upgrades, go after some side missions while still having a strong pull towards the narrative and while still feeling like, okay, you are embodying this character in a world that makes sense and not just like, oh, I'm Far Cry dude that kills 7,000 you know, soldiers over the course of a 15 hour adventure. Um, Ubisoft is making Star Wars Outlaws. I'm very curious to see if they're able to untangle the way that they make open world games for that one and and we could be in a position a new renaissance for marvel and star wars where we have great developers making great games and giving them the triple a focus i think it's just awesome to see that transition as we move from okay you know you make a licensed game like we had back in the day with captain america deadpool uh wolverine like i played all these games on this channel a decade ago and they were pretty solid like some of them are fun games but they're very much licensed games, like play through the movie storyline, like a very tried and true traditional third person action experience. And now we've got the upcoming Wolverine game from Insomniac. We got two Black Panther games. We got this Iron Man game. And it seems like we're gonna be giving Marvel characters a chance to have game of the year caliber type titles, which is pretty sick. I think it's a huge step forward and a big boost for 
any fan of the Marvel Universe, of the Star Wars Universe, and we have a pedigree because Respawn is with EA. EA oversaw that, and Respawn delivered fantastic Jedi games. We got to get a great Marvel one out there. Um, I think Marvel Rivals is a chance to be really fun this summer, but as a multiplayer game, like we're looking more towards Spider-Man as the pedigree, a single player game, and it'll be up to EA to kind of like look and see what Insomniac did, borrow from that while still make it their own, and then utilize these extra years of development to make sure these games feel very futuristic, very advanced, hopefully like Unreal Engine 5, amazing graphics, beautiful seamless worlds, a ton to do. And I think Iron Man and Black Panther is like the perfect duo to do it. I would be very excited if I, you know, like if I got to pick, those would be two of the characters that I would pick. I think lend themselves to great titles and perfect for this genre of like hybrid open world, single player narrative adventure. But let me know in the comments down below, which one you're more hyped for. Iron Man open world, probably possibly in San Francisco or some Western California city, Black Panther in Wakanda with that nemesis system like that. I mean, I love the Anthem controls. I think Anthem plus Iron Man is a match made in heaven. And then I think nemesis system plus Wakanda and Black Panther is a match made in heaven. So despite what people think about EA, I have really high hopes for these titles. I hope they can deliver and I hope we get to see something sooner rather than later. We also have 1943 and Rivals to look forward to. So I'll be covering all that and more. In the meantime, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Drink some hot chocolate. And until next time, we will see you all later.